Welcome back. Well, let's bring in now Liberal Senator Dave Sharma from Canberra. Great to see you, Dave. And not just Liberal Senator, of course, but Australia's former ambassador to Israel. And I want to ask you about what we are presuming is a joint operation between Mossad and the IDF against Hezbollah pages overnight. Very targeted operation. Uh, how sophisticated and unprecedented do you think this, this is? Well, look, firstly, Israel has not claimed responsibility for this, nor would they do so in, in normal circumstances. But Hezbollah has certainly said Israel is responsible. I think it's important to understand um, that Israel and Hezbollah have been at war now for 11 months. There have been about over 500 people killed on both sides of the border. Uh, there's over 150,000 people displaced on both sides of the border. So they are in a state of conflict. And in a state of conflict, you target your enemy, and that's clearly what this operation has intended to do in quite a targeted way, to go after Hezbollah operatives and key figures who were in possession of these pages. Well, Hezbollah has fired 8,000 rockets towards Israel just since October 7 alone. As you say, a lot of people displaced. Uh, some 63,000 Israelis have had to be removed from the northern border. Benjamin Netanyahu said on the weekend that he wants those people to be able to return home. A couple of days later, we've seen this, this very targeted attack, Hezbollah pages detonated. So this is quite an extraordinary operation, but, but it does fit with the fact that he wants, the Prime Minister wants people to be able to go back home. Yeah, look, that's right. Uh, Netanyahu and Yoav Gallant, his Defence Minister, have been saying quite insistently in recent weeks that uh, Israel's northern population needs to be able to return, schools need to be able to reopen, families need to be able to go back to their homes. And I think this, what this operation says to Hezbollah is we have the capability to do significantly more harm to you we need to reach some sort of accommodation that de-escalates tensions and allows people on both sides of the border to return and stops the incessant firing of rockets from Hezbollah uh, across into Israel. So I think it's a demonstration of capability but also intent and it's designed to send a strategic message to Hezbollah that now is the time to back off. I want to turn to this United Nations vote. Penny Wong, Foreign Minister, seems to be trying to negotiate to have the language changed. Dave Sharma, isn't this motion so extreme that you couldn't even begin to tinker with it to, to, to have it in any shape or form that would be acceptable? I, I agree with Linda Thomas-Greenfield, who is Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's ambassador to the UN, that this is a one-sided inflammatory resolution that will do nothing to advance the cause of peace. It doesn't condemn the Hamas terrorist attacks of the 7th of October. It doesn't recognise... Israel's right to exist behind peaceful and secure borders. It doesn't call for the release of hostages. For all these reasons, it should not even be an internal debate within the Australian government about what position we should be taking. We should be opposing it. But the fact that the government seems to be considering doing what the Greens are urging them to do, which is to support the resolution, I just think shows you how much they have outsourced foreign policy in the Middle East to what the Greens say and do. I mean, you know, as a diplomat, you must be a former diplomat. You must be shocked at where Australia's foreign policy is at the moment. Can you imagine having to be the Australian ambassador in Israel at the moment? Well, I think it's a very difficult job because what this government has done is consciously and quite deliberately um, not only sought to downgrade our relationship with Israel, but to uh, quite grievously damaging damage it through its public rhetoric, through its... Um, tendentious uh, interpretation of the Mark Binskin report through its change in voting positions on UN resolutions. And it's not in a way that is helping to advance the cause of peace or a two-state solution or Palestinian self-determination. It's in a way that's designed to appease, to appease local constituencies in Australia and alleviate political pressure from the Greens. That is no way to be setting foreign policy. Yeah, it's utterly extraordinary that there's a couple of marginal seats in Western Sydney that seem to be ultimately determining foreign policy and seeing us break with our ally, the United States. Dave Sharma, thank you very much for your insights.